Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now as a kid I always wanted an Alienware. I was under the misconception that an expensive brand name computer was what you needed to play games. As an adult I've learnt this was untrue, yet the Alienware systems I was mesmerised by up until my late teens are now available at a fraction of their original price and I just couldn't help myself. So today I purchased this, the Alienware M14X. At the time of its launch in 2011, this particular configuration would have cost you around $2,000, or £1,800, though the cheapest model started at just over a grand. I paid £250 for this one, about the price of some of the cheapest entry-level laptops on the market today, with other near-identical examples of the M14X retailing in similar condition for up to £400. Immediately I should point out that yes, we have built more capable gaming systems for less, and considering this thing's tame specifications by today's standards, the Alienware name really does help retain resale value. I mean, there are always tons of bids on eBay for these machines, no matter the specs. That being said, don't misunderstand that previous statement for my justification of purchase. Truth is, if you want one of these, then you'll still be likely paying over the odds, for what the components inside are actually worth. In this case, those consist of an Intel Core i7 2630QM clocked at 2GHz, an NVIDIA GT 555M and 8GB of DDR3. The processor features 4 cores and 8 threads and turbos up to 2.9GHz. It also sports integrated HD3000 graphics. Now it's easy to hear the words or letters i7 and numbers and immediately think excellent. So I ran Cinebench to see exactly where this thing stands today and it seemed to complete the multi-core test in quite a snappy fashion and in the end I saw a high score of 375 after 3 runs that all came in differently. I'd say that's likely a similar score to what you could expect from say a modern day i3-4130 desktop CPU. That's an estimate though, and of course one based just on a Cinebench result. When it comes to gaming between the CPU and GPU, I can say for sure it won't be the processor holding us back. The GT555M on the other hand features 1.5GB of DDR3 memory, and will in theory bottleneck the i7, though we'll have to confirm my suspicions later on in the video. I'd say as a desktop equivalent, the Mobile 555 here would probably trade blows with a GT440. But come on, doesn't this thing look good? Even most gaming laptops today are quite big and heavy, so I was expecting this thing to weigh a ton. And although it records a weight of 6 pounds or 2.7 kilos, it doesn't feel all that awkward to carry around. You wouldn't want to drop it on your toe though, put it that way. As I'm sure you know, it isn't uncommon for batteries on laptops to get significantly weaker over time, and with a veteran gaming machine like this, I expected to have to run it on charge permanently. But to my surprise, under normal usage conditions, I was able to get two and a half hours out of it. That browsing time was also pretty pleasant. The laptop still feels snappy under Windows 10, thanks to the aging but still quickish i7, and everything was done in comfort. The keyboard seems more spacious than it is if that makes sense, and the hard rubber keys feel great under the fingertips. Despite the aforementioned size, if you're using it up to a table or desk, then it feels wonderfully sturdy and well built, and it's a far cry from the feel of some plasticky and hollow modern budget laptops. Aesthetics wise, if you like RGB lighting, then you've come to the right place. When you turn it on with the alien head shaped power button, you better believe that lights up. The hard drive activity light doubles as the alien's eyes, so don't use this thing in a dark room unless you plan on hosting a rave. The Alienware logo under the screen also displays a red hue, and these sort of dual scale designs that look like speakers but aren't, shine green throughout your usage time. The keyboard even spans the entire spectrum of the rainbow, and to someone like me who doesn't really care for RGB, sorry everyone, I actually find it really cool looking. Thanks to Alienware's Command Center app, you can customize all of it as well, and even have a different profile for each game you play. Sounds like a nice gimmick, but unlike speed stripes on a car, none of these light-up components give you extra horsepower. And if you are considering one of these, that's what's important. So let's get into some games. So this laptop has a native screen resolution of 900p, which will definitely help out with the benchmarks. 
First of all, I ran Bioshock Infinite at medium settings and saw a 35 frames per second average. Now the 1% and 0.1% lows respectively were 27 and 25, which tells us that there really wasn't all that much stutter. There will be some areas of the map where this will occur, but overall it was a pretty smooth experience. In CSGO I set everything to low and once again ran the game at 900p to see an average of 81 frames per second. Now the footage on screen granted was taken from a bot match but the figures were actually taken from an online game in Dust 2 and I have to say that there were one or two moments of stutter. This happened literally after I spawned and another time later on just totally randomly but that accounts for that low 0.1% figure there. The next game I tried is also a pretty old one by now, it's 2013's Tomb Raider. Again this ran at 900p with the normal in-game preset and actually did the best out of today's results apart from CSGO with 53 frames on average. Those 1% and 0.1% lows came in at 43 and 41, again just like Bioshock Infinite indicating that there really wasn't much stutter to speak of. These figures were taken from the benchmark test, but having jumped into the game shortly afterwards, I can safely say that once again, it did average around 50 frames per second, so you won't have a hard time running that game on a system like this. A new game I've added to the benchmark tests and one I've been meaning to play for ages is Outlast. Now at 900p with the medium settings, this ran at 33 frames per second, both inside and outside of the building. This is a pretty fun one, but a very scary one at the same time. But uh, those RGB lights will definitely keep you company and stop you being as scared if you're playing this in the dark, which is good. By now, the fan was starting to really get quite loud. So I thought, why not quickly push this thing to its limit with a couple of newer titles, starting with Fallout 4. Here I had to turn it down to 720p to achieve 30 frames per second, and bumping up the resolution or even just one setting slightly higher really did impact the frame rate, and I had to turn things all the way down just to keep that solid 30 average. As you can see by those other figures, there was a little bit of stutter here and there, but nothing too significant, and I could probably happily play Fallout 4 on this system. Finally in Dirt 4, once again at 720p, I had to turn things down to low with the ultra low in-game preset to achieve 42 frames per second. Now if you wanted to turn the settings up here you could probably get away with low, but know that you'd be running at about 30 to 35 frames per second, and that 30 frames per second may turn to 25 in some of the more action-packed races where there are more opponents as well. So the native 900p screen resolution really benefited the games, though newer titles needed to be dropped to 720p in order to run smoothly. You'll always be paying more for laptops than you will desktops for the same performance, regardless as to whether or not the brand name adds an extra premium like it does here. And while I would wholeheartedly recommend building a desktop PC with used parts instead, if you need or want a second-hand laptop that can play those older or easier to run games, and don't mind sacrificing silence, coolness and portability for something that looks pretty beasty, then an old Alienware might just be for you. But it's totally dependent on the price you pay for what's inside. Always remember to research specs, look up original reviews, and check out the prices of similar models if you want to shop for one of these yourselves. That being said, if you ignore the gaming aspect, then you'll still have a pretty great everyday performer, but I don't know anyone who bought a gaming laptop to benchmark Microsoft PowerPoint. Finally, let's say you do own one of these models, or are about to buy one, and like me, you wouldn't mind seeing a little extra performance. Is there any room for upgrade? Well, sort of. The RAM in this model is at maximum capacity, with 8GB, but the i7 can be swapped out for anything up to and including the 2920XM Extreme Edition, which really isn't expensive as it sounds, but the graphics card, the weakest component, is embedded on the motherboard, so it can't be replaced. It's a shame as this is by far the weakest link in this model, so you'd have to rely on using an external GPU, like I've done before with other laptops, to improve gaming performance. Perhaps I'll give that a go sometime and see how good that old i7 really is. To conclude, if you want to play games on a £250 or $320 budget, 
then you would absolutely be better off building a second-hand parts-based desktop PC. If you want a laptop on the same budget though and don't care all that much about modern AAA titles and how they run, then why not go for one of these if you can find it at a decent price? Speaking exclusively of this model right here, and I've really enjoyed my time with it and will continue to do so. It's not much of a gamer anymore, but it's got character, and it's allowed me to cross a childhood ambition of owning an Alienware off of my list. Plus it's still fast enough to be a great everyday machine if I'm away from home. So guys, there we have it. This has been a look back at an old Alienware laptop, and hopefully I've helped you decide as to whether or not you should buy one of these in 2018. As always, if you like this video, please leave a like on it down below. If you didn't like this video, leave a dislike on it down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.